Before I get into this video, I want to inform all you guys that I am hosting another speed duel tournament over at my Discord. If you guys are interested in entering this tournament, it is a $3 entry fee, but there is a $20 prize for first place and a $15 prize for second place, as well as the entire top four will receive free entry into my next pay to enter tournament. If a tournament sounds fun to you guys and you're free uh, starting from the 25th onwards, that is the start date, I highly recommend you head over to my Discord and join the tournament. If you're curious about any other information, like how long rounds will last or uh, when de if it's, you know, deck list submissions or not. Anyway, that, all that information is available in my Discord. So yeah, head on over there, guys. And yeah, anyway, let's get into the video. Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Cursov and welcome back to another video. It's been a week as of a few hours ago that I last uploaded a video and on all honesty I haven't been recording because I've really been waiting for my decks to show up so I can do a deck like opening for like the, the new sets and whatever. Um, yeah, they were pre-ordered, they were express shipped and they're still not here. They should be here by at least Tuesday, I believe, though, so at least we have that going for us. But regardless, I want to keep giving you guys some content, so I am here with something to tie us all down until I can do those openings, start doing deck profiles, and all of that jazz with the new cards. Today we're here to discuss one of the new cards. We're here one asking the question, how good is Twisted Personality? So... Twisted Personality is a Yami Merrick skill card with the following effect. Each time a player loses life points, place one counter on this card max 3. Once per turn during your main phase, you can use one of the following skills. Remove two counters from this card, then discard one random card from your opponent's hand. Or, remove three counters from this card, then destroy one face-up card your opponent controls. So both of these skill effects are already absolutely phenomenal just by first glance. We get counters for life point damage, which is a necessity throughout any game state. If you're going to win, you're either winning by deck or life point, and life point is usually the option used. So anytime life point damage is dealt, you get to go ahead and stick a counter on that skill card. When you have two counters, you can just rip a card from your opponent's hand, reducing their hand size, keeping that hand control on the go, or you can wipe out a face-up card on their field. This basically gives you constant card advantage over your opponent. As well, it also lets you control their board, control their game state. They're trying to zone you, how about no? They have Thousand Eyes Strict on the field, how about no? You think they're, they're chilling with Moth? Uh, Moth doesn't matter anymore. Boom, gone. This card keeps you in such an advantageous situation, and literally the only drawback to this card is that you max out on three counters. So if damage is still done, you like throw out that turn, and you haven't spent your counters on it, then you know you're not in a great. Like it sucks that you can't get more. But besides that, there's really no downfall to this card, and it offers you so so much. One big thing about this card is that it's actually a generic skill card. If you don't know what I mean when I say a generic skill card, I'm basically saying that this card does not have a specific deck to be run in. For example, Tribal Synergy is a great card, but it needs Harpy Ladies and Amazonist Swordswoman. Or any Amazonist monster. Uh, Swordswoman is just the best. Or uh, Dragon Caller is a great card because it's a plus one, but you know you need to be running a dragon deck. Things like that. But this is a phenomenal card, and it doesn't have any card requirements to be ran in your deck, no archetype requirements, so it's just a fantastic generic card that gives you easy removal and easy hand destruction, which is absolutely phenomenal. The thing though that makes this card overall really, really phenomenal is what the meta is sort of shaping up to be. So in the new sets, we had uh, cards, a lot of burn cards released, like that of Zoma and Nightmare Wheel and Boganian and Lava Golem. These are all cards that burn your opponent. Each time burn damage is dealt, 
you're grabbing a counter. So small life point burn from like mask or nightmare wheel, just 500, 500, you get a counter for each 500 that you're dealing to your opponent. So running this in a burn deck allows you to slowly whittle away at your opponent's life points while also keeping them in a situation where they really can't come back because you're removing their monsters that might give them some advantage. You're removing cards from their hand that might offer uh, back row removal. Or maybe if you're playing a burn mirror match, you can help destroy their burn cards. You can stop their lava golems. You can stop their, uh, their nightmare wheels, their zomas, because these are all face-up cards that you can destroy, keeping you in an advantageous position while pushing them over to the side. They can still burn, but if they don't have the card resources to keep up with you, they're basically just going to lose. On the other hand though, even if you're not running a burn deck, because burn is going to be so prevalent in this upcoming meta it seems, you basically want to either side or main deck this skill card in the majority of decks you're going to run. Reason being, you're going to run into a lot of burn decks in this format, and this skill card is just offering you a way to sort of counter their strategy. If they burn you, then you get counters, and you can use the counters that they're giving you, and maybe you're giving yourself a little bit, to be able to keep up with their advantage game state. They have removal, you have removal. They have hand destruction, you also have hand destruction. Whatever they have, you have. And you can keep up with them in a circumstance like this. So if your deck doesn't require a skill, I feel like you should probably at least run this in the side deck. So when you do face up against the burn match, you can keep up with their overall game state. You have easy constant removal for their trap cards and their burn cards and stuff like that and you don't have to spend so much time focusing on things like night beams or twisters or uh, offerings to the doom cards like that for removal instead you can focus on just letting your skill do most of the removal and focus more on what your decks actually supposed to do along with that since burn decks don't normally run a lot of destruction cards except maybe lava golem for outing your opponent's cards um, but most decks besides burn are going to run a lot of cards for destruction. You usually actually have an opportunity to take the advantage game state there as you have the same amount of removal as they do with the skills, but then you also probably have other removal, just your monsters maybe running over theirs or back row hate or things like that, allowing you to actually take the advantage game state where under normal circumstances, if they were the one running that skill, they'd probably be taking more advantage against you. That's why the skill is so powerful in burn decks, where burn decks doesn't have a lot of removal, but this offers them that removal that they were missing, and it offers it to them easily. It's basically a skill tailor-made for burn, and that's why it's a Yami Merrick skill, because this guy loves to burn. Another big thing, too, with this skill effect is that it offers non-targeting removal, so it doesn't care about your Lord of D, for example, on the field protecting those blue eyes. We can still go ahead and wipe out those blue eyes with the skill. Along with that, because skill effects are, they make a closed game state they can't be chained to. Back in like the old format, a lot of people were running Dark Red Enchanter to try and hit that Parasite from hand. Or they were running, uh, what's it called? Forceful Checkpoint. There we go. To also help remove that Parasite from hand. But if there was a monster on field, you can go ahead and chain your Parasite and equip it to the monster if you wanted to. But with this skill card, if you go ahead and hit a random Parasite Paranoid facing off against the Moth matchup, it's gone. They cannot chain that Parasite Paranoid. You hit it, you randomly got that target, it's gone from their hand. There's nothing they can do. This also includes cards like Offering to the Doom can't be chained, or... Uh, what's it called? Order to Charge also can't be chained. Quick play spells and quick effects cannot be chained from the hand. This also includes the new card being DD Crow, which is a good card to run in certain matchups. So if you can hit these quick play effects from the hand they with the skill, they can't be chained, your opponent can't respond to it, and you guarantee this card's removal. One last big thing I want to mention about this card is that it takes a deck that could have been extremely, extremely powerful and lowers its power level a lot. 
So Thousand Eyes of Shrek had a lot of potential coming into this format with it offering a heavy amount of stall, forcing your opponent to run out to it, like maybe offerings to the doomed, or running Santa Claus to out it, and then immediately DD crowing it so it can't be recurred and stuff like that. But what this card offers is easy destruction for it if it's on the field. It doesn't matter if it's chilling on the field there. You can just go ahead and boom, pop it, bye bye, a uh, thousand eyes restrict. Or if your opponent doesn't commit to summoning it, you can go ahead and rip cards from their hand, ripping thousand or ripping like say relinquished or thousand eyes idle, stopping them from summoning the thousand eyes restrict. Along with that, the thousand eyes spell card is phenomenal but it costs a lot of cards to use it. You have to spend round about three cards to summon your Restrict, which means it's a neg two, unless you can get some good cards in Graveyard, but even then you're still overall going neg, and that leaves you with one card in hand. Say it's a Sphere Karibo, you probably don't want to go ahead and spend that. Your opponent can just rip it, and for a deck that already loses a lot of advantage to get a powerful card on the field, this deck, this card, basically just says, that strategy doesn't work super well anymore because I can rip more cards from your hand, lowering your advantage state. I can remove your Thousand Eyes Restrict, lowering your advantage state. And I can stop you from summoning Thousand Eyes Restrict or Relinquished by just removing cards from your hand and potentially hitting those monsters. So it severely weakens a deck that had a lot of potential in this meta, which sucks for me, because that's the deck that I really want to play. But anyway, as of now, this is all I have to say about this skill card, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I highly recommend hitting that like button. It helps me reach out to more people, get more views, get more overall traction on my channel. And it's greatly appreciated because I put a lot of work into this. And yeah, it makes me want to keep on doing what I'm doing. I'll have you guys the card deck openings uh, soon enough. And we'll get back on track with normal, regular videos. Anyway, that's going to be a wrap, guys. I'll catch you guys all hopefully soon.